Hey, 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 Mr. Manly here with lesson number 502 in How to Be Manly. As you may remember, I make a living in the women's undergarment industry, coming up with better fits and whatnot. Well, I got a call from my boss, whom I've never met, Janet Upright. And Janet said, due to my handiwork, she's decided to come up with our own catalog under the direction of yours truly. She wants me to come up with a name for the catalog and select the models to be featured. I thought, yeah, yeah. And who will Dr. Feelgood's first model be? After doing some research and marketing, I decided not to follow in the footsteps of Victoria's Secrets, Talbots, or Chantel. I decided since there are so many divorced women, why not feed into that and call our catalog Divorcee Lingerie, still hot to trot. Janet was thrilled with the idea and met me to discuss the details. When I saw her, I was flabbergasted. Let me just say she has the perfect last name because she had a set of uprights on her. I mean, up and good. And that's not just because I'm a former place kicker. She said, I love your idea, and I think it's partly because I'm recently divorced. I'd like to embrace your thoughts and share them with all the others who think they've fallen. I told her that's a novel approach, but to see both sides, what are the things that you miss most? She said, I miss the romance, spontaneity, and simple pleasures. With my charm, I knew I could satisfy the above and do so in a manly manner. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, follow along in your manly manual, page number 502, and repeat after me. Number one, I could show you old-fashioned romance, like Bob Seger, out in the back seat of my 60s Chevy. Number two, hey Janet, look at this spontaneity. Let's give it a go and see if it has spontaneous combustion. Number three, you know, simple pleasures are the best. I have a simple pleasure for you that will make you feel your best. Soon after, as Janet spontaneously grabs you by your simple pleasure and tosses you and your pleasure into the back of your 60 Chevy, pours in combustible fluids, and grabs the Zippo, you'll realize just what kind of man you really are. Until next time, this is Mr. Manly saying be manly and good day. Breaking the news that's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. The TSA reports that 93% of the guns agents removed from carry-on luggage at U.S. airports last year were loaded. Also loaded at U.S. airports last year? Southwest Pilots. The Los Angeles Chargers hired Jim Harbaugh as their head coach. Michigan fans were shocked to lose their coach. L.A. fans were shocked to learn they had the Chargers. Boeing announced changes to how it manufactures planes. Topping the list, no more using Elmer's glue. Making sure breaking news stays broken. Tune in Monday for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. I saw this story online about all the plates that PennDOT won't let you get. Yeah, they're like the bouncers of the license plate world. Just kicking out all the weird ones. Can't have anything too offensive. You know, because Pennsylvania is known for such as for fine taste and high moral standards here in the Commonwealth, right? PennDOT personnel do not keep a record of rejected plates. However... They do keep a do not issue list of 2,872 personalized registration plates. And what's clear on this list is either people have been very creative in their requests or PennDOT people have spent a ton of time on Urban Dictionary. At least three plates were linked to one featured in the iconic Seinfeld episode where Kramer receives the wrong vanity license plate that would have belonged to a proctologist. So you'd be signaling to the whole world, hey, I'm the guy who might want to check your prostate in traffic. Plus, people who were hauling, you know, with several plates, at least seven had a variation of the phrase hauling butt, but in the other word, okay? I'm trying to stay in tune with Penn not, not even use the word. Sports fans, oh yeah, they got creative as well. How about F Dallas, D-A-1-1-A-S, or F Crosby, C-R-0-S-B-Y? Both used a multiple ways of targeting the Cowboys and Penguin star Sidney Crosby there. Penn State fans, you can't use LFG PSU. Phillies fans can't use LFG PHLS. 51 plates contain the word bad and 29 contain BD, followed by inappropriate phrases or numbers. So PennDOT said, eh, can't have those. Now, the list also had some safer work words like bite me. Yeah, apparently they don't want road rage to escalate into a license plate feud. Oh, you want to cut me off? Well, bite me. Here are some other ones that are on the list. F cancer. Fancy AF. In fact, there's a whole ton of stuff with AF in it. And one of them, Gandalf. I think they think ALF might be something like AF, and that's gone. You can't get got to pee. Uh, you can't get Camry. 
I'm not sure why. Uh, and check this one out. Hate kids, H-A-K-I-D-S. That's a no-go. Can't have that. Sorry. No expressing your frustrations about little Timmy TPing your house again. Uh, oh, and F you Karen's on the list, too. So if your ex-wife's Karen or you just don't like Karen's, you're going to keep that sentiment off the road. But here's my favorite. Only fan is rejected. Hey, PennDOT, leave the entrepreneurs alone. Somebody just wants to promote their side hustle on the highway? Only fan driving around recruiting subscribers at red light? I'm all about that. I'm just glad PennDOT's out there looking out for us, protecting the roads from offensive plates because nothing says safe driving like avoiding license plates to say bad or BD. So drive safe. Keep those license plates clean, and always remember it's not the words on the plate that matter. It's the driver behind the wheel. Unless, of course, their plate says, drunk AF. In that case, stay a couple car lengths away. The following rant may cause you to pull your hair out, scream at the radio, punch the dashboard, Complaints should be addressed to Loudmouth Yambag at rock107.com. Hey, I'm Rock107's Prospector, and here's what's got me jacked. It's presidential election time. And this is not some partisan rant about how one party is better than the other or anything like that. I'm such a cynic, I'm convinced they're all self-important criminal yambags who are only in it to line their pockets. But I do think our elections can be improved. But that brings up the entire primary election system in this country, which I think is messed up. I hate that we stretch out the primary season over months like it's a sports league for us or something. Iowa, New Hampshire, Super Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. I thought this republic was supposed to at least fool me into thinking my vote counted. But by the time we vote in the Keystone State, the nominations are all but locked up. That suppresses voter turnout in many areas, which, of course, is exactly what the plutocracy wants. I think we should have a national primary election day, just like we do for the general election. That way, some tiny little state doesn't skew the whole process before we get the ball rolling. And if you're thinking, well, hey, Prospector, how are we going to get to know the candidates and see what they're all about? The longer process is needed to weed out the chaff. I'm not saying they can't campaign. I'm not saying no debates. I'm simply saying all the primaries on the same day. We got to get rid of exit polls. They shouldn't be allowed. Again, it changes how people in the western part of the country turn out to vote. Wait till all the polls are closed all across America, then start with the results. Elections shouldn't be all but over before some yam bag in Washington state even gets a chance to get out and vote. Do these things so that we can go back to pretending that this fading country wasn't bought and paid for decades ago. I'm Prospector. I'm for the people. Who's with me? I gotta, 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 go crazy, man! Ever see the crazy guy screaming at the wall outside the Times building? Where does this rage come from, my son? Tweet us with hashtag I found Prospector and we'll come and get him. Prospector, mornings on Rock 107. Are you a nice hole? Good morning, I'm Rock 107's Prospector. So, are you a nice hole? Do you know what I mean? A nice hole is someone who does something to be nice, but that thing is actually something wrong or dangerous to others. This happened to me by the airport yesterday. I'm coming down from the airport towards uh, Pittston, DuPont, all that stuff. So I had to deal with the uh, roundabouts there. You know, three of the roundabouts, blah, blah, blah. And I know there's still a lot of consternation regarding these roundabouts. You can practically feel the tension. People hate these things. It's like navigating a maze of uncertainty. If you don't know the rules for how to use the roundabout, it works like this, basically. Rules are simple. Yield on the entry, never yield again. It's like a circle of trust, or in this case, a circle of traffic. That way, the folks in the roundabout, they keep moving at their speed. You don't slow them down, and no one slows you down once you get into the roundabout. But then enters this clown, making a mess of it all. Yesterday, it was ruined by the nice hole. The person who thought they were being nice to one person, but really ended up being a complete yam bag to all the other people around him. So I'm on the roundabout. I'm out of the first one. I'm under 81 there. I'm entering the second roundabout. There's a couple of cars uh, and one truck behind me, a, a guy in front of me in a yellow Jeep Wrangler. Actually, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. I have no idea. But I do know that person was a total nice hole. As I said, roundabouts, yield on the way in, never yield again. But the person in the Wrangler screeches to a halt in the middle of the roundabout. Dead stop because there's a white pickup at the entrance where 81 South and William Street enter the roundabout. So this mental midget, this yellow yam bag, hits the brakes to let the pickup into the roundabout. 
We went from 30 miles an hour to zero in about two seconds. Everybody's locking up their brakes at the same time. Sounds like a screeching gaggle of birds as we're all frantically trying to stop without crunching each other's bumpers, all because the Wrangler driver wanted to be nice. And maybe the guy in the pickup thought it was nice. The rest of us, the ones who are driving legally, who are acting as expected in the roundabout, are all clutching our chest, trying to get our heart rates under 198 again. We all know this guy wasn't nice. He was a nice haul. Life's pretty tough right now. There's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time for the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. A commuter train operator in Philly named Richard Murray Day found a lost wallet on his train and drove 55 miles to return it. This happened on New Year's Eve, which was also his birthday, but he still did it. He went out of his way. The guy who lost it, Greg Basile, had door cam footage of Richard dropping it off, but he didn't say who he was. Somehow, Greg tracked him down to say thanks. Now they've become friends and both plan to stay in touch. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. Ladies and gentlemen, grab the kids, call your neighbors, and gather around the radio. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector's Yam Bag of the Week, as decided by you at rock107.com. We uncover the most baffling, ridiculous, pathetic, cockeyed, laughable, preposterous blunders in the world of misdeeds. Nominee number one. This will make you invest in shatterproof windows. Imagine sitting in your living room when all of a sudden you hear glass shattering and your neighbor is in your house naked. The nude man in question was 27-year-old Michael Yankincheck, and once inside, he got up and started walking toward the occupant, stating, I'm going to kill you. He said this multiple times. A male resident began to grapple with Yankincheck, but he broke free just as law enforcement arrived, police entered the home, and the man, who was still naked, approached officers, refusing to listen to verbal commands. Police say they attempted to take Yankincheck into custody, but he continuously resisted and disobeyed numerous orders. It took three officers to secure him. He's now released on $15,000 bail. Nominee number two. A man went into a Walmart bathroom and threatened to blow up the place, and he wasn't talking about unloading his bowels. A 28-year-old man in Florida named Cody Clements found a lost cell phone in a Walmart bathroom last Friday and got the bright idea to use it to call in a bomb threat. He told the 911 dispatcher there was a bomb in the store. When the dispatcher called the number back, Colding told them, tick-tock, tick-tock, and hung up. This wasn't just a catchphrase, it was also his excuse. Cody left the store just as cops were arriving. Cops contacted the phone's owner, looked at security footage, and pieced together what happened. Then they tracked Cody down, who lived in the area. He was arrested and told authorities he'd been seeing people on TikTok making fake bomb threats and decided to do one himself. He's charged with making a false report about planning a bomb, which is a felony. Nominee number three. This would be like smashing all the windows of a Rolls Royce to steal a copy of Green Day's Dookie on CD. A radio station in southeastern Oklahoma is off the air after owners say thieves cut down a broadcast tower. They were after all the copper in the cables. But get this, they cut up about 80 to 100 feet of copper and hauled it off. That's worth about 100 bucks. However, the damage they caused to the broadcast tower is around half a million. This happened last week. The station unexpectedly went off the air on Monday, and they initially thought it was because of weather. Then they saw the tower and realized foul play was involved. The suspects got away. For now, authorities are working with local scrapyards to try and track them down. Nominee number four. Thankfully for all the criminals out there, your driver's license doesn't say you're a meth head. Unless, of course, you add that on. Cops in Florida recently pulled over a 46-year-old man named Robert Brush as part of a routine traffic stop. His tailgate was covering his license plate. They asked Robert for his license and registration, but when he handed over his ID, the deputies noticed it had a white crystalline substance on it. Cards like driver's license are sometimes used to break up drugs, so the cops tested the substance and it allegedly came back positive for methamphetamine. A police dog was called in and more meth was found in the vehicle. The man was arrested on multiple charges and sent to jail, where he may be a celebrity. Jail records show Robert's been there over 50 times since 1997. And the winner is... The guy who handed over his license at a traffic stop and there was meth on it. Yeah, easy way to get caught. You're the Yam Bag of the Week. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's Yam Bag of the Day. Weekday mornings on Rock 107.
Thanks for listening to Prospector's Prime Cuts podcast. Be sure to catch us live weekdays from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on Rock 107 or online at rock107.com or the Rock 107 app. A free download for your Android or iPhone. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.